thank you for taking your time uh, out of your, your busy schedule to meet with us. No, no, this is important. Perhaps you can save uh, Valparaiso lots of time right now by just laying it all out and they'll drop their litigation. Well, all those sorts of although we, we are struggling mightily and we've never really had a good shot at trying to do this even back when I was the program office, but the issue of the airplane for all practical purposes is not noise. Mm -hmm. Noise levels is not the concern. Um, now, I, I've got to explain that because everybody goes, well, how come we've heard nothing but noise on the sure. airplane? The, the issue has been when you bring a large operation like this into a base that's largely been an operational uh, base, if you will, operational test. The 33rd wing with its airplanes, obviously the test wing. Less airplanes, uh, and everybody goes, well, how does the noise level of an F-35 compare to an F-15? Well, uh, for the folks that have carried their portable decibel meters around, it's a louder airplane by, by measurement of standing next to or under the airplane as it flies by. But, but to the folks that are out there in their house, in their church, in their school, I, I got to tell you, I really, you're not going to notice a great deal of difference between an F-15 coming over your house or an F-35 or an F-16 with a new engine or an F-18 or an F-22. Uh, we've been wrongly accused of saying, well, this airplane is no louder than F-15s and F-16s, and that's not anything we've ever said. We said we're equivalent to the airplanes that are being fielded today, which are F-18s, F-22s, and there's virtually no difference to that. And those airplanes have been integrated into communities across the country with none of this furor and, uh, if you will, uh, hate and discontent that seems to have evolved over the discussion in, in Valparaiso. Well, first of all, let me say that it, uh, my discussions with Mayor Arnold and the folks there, I've not talked to the other commission or county uh, councilmen that are involved in this discussion, but talked to Mayor Arnold on several occasions. And I'm convinced that even he wants the F-35 to come. Mm -hmm. uh, although you may say he's got kind of a funny way of showing that. Well, the uh, I, I tell you my view of looking at this back from the Washington side of this was that um, I feel that the Air Force and the services involved in here got, got in kind of a unique situation about how they were constrained to talk to the community about what was going on and or not. It, it, it very quickly got, in some ways, you know, there was a lot of letters that flowed around, There was a, even before the lawsuits came in. So what, for some reason or other, which I've yet to understand, we got in a situation where we had to be very limited in communication with the folks in Valparaiso because of a lot of things going on. Some of it was our fault on the Air Force side, some of it was on Valparaiso's fault, some of it was just, um, you know, direction from our legal staff back on the, uh, in the Pentagon. So I, I think there's a lot of blame to go around why communication just totally did not work as it should have early in this process with Valparaiso. So I, I think that's the lesson learned from this, that uh, if we ever find a way to do the communication differently, we could have avoided this. The F-35, I gotta tell you, is probably not even my biggest worry right now. How, how we, how we integrate all those missions out there uh, that you asked about, uh, the Army, the AFSOC folks, the Navy folks, the F-35 folks, the Test Wing folks, the Space folks, they have a squadron out there. I mean, there is, there is every entity you can imagine, not the missile folks from the 53rd, the weapons folks that come from all over the Air Force to do their practice, live firing of weapons they don't get to do anywhere else in the world. Um, so. My biggest concern as we look 5, 10, 15 years down the road is not can I get 107 F-35s in, but can I, can I make sure that we uh, find a way to work together at the Department of Defense and the Tri-Service level to be able to preserve all of that activity. So the 46th test one, uh, is it here for good or is it going to... No other place for it to go. The, the ranges we shoot right here, the ranges we use right now, um, uh, very few places in the world where you can do most of this weapons testing. Almost no places in the world you can do some of the very long range weapons. When you look at fact, we have water ranges that essentially go from the shores up there at Santa Rosa all the way down to Key West if you choose to activate all that. I think there was some suggestion uh, from, I believe, some officials over in the Bay County area where they're building a new regional airport. There was some suggestion that this airport might at some point close. Is that? Uh, um, and nothing that ever, and no discussions even came close to that. In other words, the answer is how we're looking at how we continue to support its expansion. Okay. I mean, we're, we're, everything we're doing with the F-35 considers the fact that that airport will be there and flying at least the volume it is right now.